I'm streaming. I'm just sending in a little note here, and then I'll get started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just posting this in Slack real quick. here I whoever's watching um, today's Wednesday and it's the third day of week four I think this will be my last stream this week I don't plan on having any new content for you so I think uh, I will I'll say a bit more uh, I'll, I'll do an announcement or something to say a bit more but I think tomorrow would be better um, spent helping you all troubleshoot and work on your projects so I'm gonna do that instead of live streaming tomorrow but I do have a lot of things to try to cover today, so I will be getting into it pretty soon. As usual, if you're watching, it'd be great to see you say hi. If you want to say hi in the live stream chat channel or in the the Twitch chat, either way, just to kind of, you know, let me know that you're out there. That would be great. Otherwise, if you're watching this, if you're watching this later in the archive, of course, that's, um, I, mean, I guess you could leave a comment on YouTube if you feel, if you feel like it, but you don't have to. Uh, it just helps me know that the, these are helpful. It helps me kind of feel good about doing these videos and live streams uh, if I know that you're out there watching these either in, in real time or, or later. So, ah, hello. You hear the little dot, dot, dot sound. Uh, that's when someone leaves me a message. I should probably mute that. <laughs> but yes, hello. Good to see you. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying hi. Uh, so uh, today, the big thing I want to get through today is working on uh, getting practical with HTML. So uh, this will be a fairly, um, I don't know if intensive is the right word, but I, I do, I want to cover a lot of steps today. Now you've hopefully been learning from W3 Schools and Code Academy. Those are paced a little differently, but they ultimately have pretty similar learning goals and, and outcomes. So if you worked through what I initially suggested you work through for either Code Academy or W3 Schools, uh, you should have a pretty solid foundation of HTML conceptually. Uh, but today, I, the, the main focus is actually making that practical and actually building a web page with that. Both W3 Schools and Code Academy let you practice in kind of a sandbox environment, which is great for learning, uh, for you know, initial learning. Uh, but to really make it stick, I think trying it in a real scenario almost always works a lot better. For, for me, anyway, whenever I'm learning a new programming language or something, or, or, or software, I, I learn it a lot better if I have something I want to or need to do with it and then my learning process is like, okay, how do I do that thing with it? Or how do I complete this project with it? Uh, that helps me orient my, my um, inquiry and also motivate me to get it done. Uh, so that's what this project is for you, hopefully. I've, I've given you an assignment to deal with HTML and CSS to create a web page from scratch. And that is probably a challenge if you've never done it before. And that's on purpose. I, I want you to, to be challenged here and show me that you can work through that challenge. So uh, that's, I really want to get into, I, I guess, the specifics of that and go through it. I'll just say a couple things. I, um, I put this in an announcement today when I sent, it out, uh, sent out the notes for today. Um, you know, I hope you're watching these things. I mean, if you are, then you are. That's great. Um, those of you who are not watching are probably not hearing this right now. So I don't know. It's like a preaching to the choir situation. But um, I, I, I'm concerned that a number and even probably a majority of the class uh, are not watching these videos or doing the work like during the week and you're trying to do it all at the end. And, and I, I mean, I, I have said that that's okay. And it is. I just worry that especially with this week, there's so much that it might be overwhelming if you try to do it all Friday night. Uh, so that's a concern. I mean, or if you do do it all Friday night, the whatever you can accomplish in that time won't be as valuable or as good as it might have been if you'd spent more time on it, kind of taking it step by step. So I'm kind of rethinking my approach to this class, not for you all. I mean, the class is almost done, really, so there's not much to, to reconsider, but I will be teaching this class again. Uh, I am teaching another online class in June, July. It's on creative coding. Um, in the fall, things are going to be 
who knows what, but one of my classes is going to be hybrid. So I'm, I'm continuing to debate how I feel about the balance between letting you do work, work through the material at your own pace, and uh, that's kind of one idea, or the other idea would be just like giving it to you kind of piece by piece by piece and saying, this is due today, this is due the next day, this is due the next day, this is due the next day, and that, like highly structured kind of content. That's more work for me ahead of time, but if it gives you a path to success, that's, that's okay. I mean, I'm happy to do that. So I, I am curious if, like, especially if you're taking another online class right now, uh, if you have any thoughts about the structure of how I've been doing it, let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you think works and what, what doesn't. Um, so, I mean, if you're watching this, you probably think that the videos at least kind of work. So that's, uh, that may impact the kind of feedback I get. But, uh, you know, I just, whatever. Whenever you're watching this, however you're watching this, just let me know what you think. All right. Uh, okay, so let's get practical with HTML. So I've actually, let me switch over to my scene here. Let's take a look at the notes first. Um, by the way, you can see the grading. I'm still working through that, but you can also see, I don't know if these make sense to you, but these are the things that I have to grade still. And uh, there's a lot missing. A lot of you haven't turned things in yet. So uh, again, probably the people watching this are not the ones I need to really talk to, but if you have things you need to turn in, please turn them in. <laughs> uh, can't seem to switch, there we go. Um, okay, so I need to switch to my browser. So let's take a quick look at the notes for today. It's in Canvas. I can't remember if I linked to this. I, I, I'm not super, I'm still not super happy with how I've organized the Canvas site, by the way. Um, but the content is here. It's just kind of maybe hard to get to sometimes. Um, yeah, so I, I would say a little bit more about my expectations for this web page here. I, I could add them to the assignment, but the assignment is already very long and I kind of, I don't want to bog that down too much. But in terms of what you're trying to produce, I think it might be useful to remind you what I'm looking for and, and what you need to be doing. So yesterday, in yesterday's stream, I gave you a chance to practice some of the digital methodologies, the, the image visualization one or the text analysis one. You could also choose networking or digital journalism. Um, but you still need to make that choice. So if you did follow through, uh, like practicing yesterday, you still probably need to do something else. Now in Slack, a couple of you showed work from other kinds of things that you've pasted into Voyant Tools. If that's your project um, that you want to work on for this, this module for this week, then okay. I mean, you, you probably need to do some more work, but that's, that's okay to do that. Um, all in, the point is, there's kind of two sides to this project, and I don't want to lose sight of that, even though I'm talking about HTML and CSS today you still have some work to do in terms of whichever digital methodology module you've chosen to focus on. So that's going to give you the content that you put into the web page today um, or whenever, but this is what I'll be talking about today. So uh, this is, it is describing the assignment, but this is the kind of thing that you need to make sure your website has, your web page has. Uh, a title, several paragraphs of text. Essentially, you're writing an essay, a short essay, but a, a web essay. Uh, in this essay or this narrative, you should be talking about what you did. So that's your description of the process. Uh, any conclusions you can draw. You should use images and or embedded media. That might be a YouTube video or an embedded Kumu map or something. Um, but either one or both of those. Uh, you should have links to related resources. So if you cite a source or if you use a tool, link to it. Um, and likewise, citations and links if you have those. Right. So you should have uh, all of these things in here. So let's take a look at some examples from previous students. These go back to, um, this goes back to spring of, I guess, 2019 for a couple of these. And this is Elsa's project and um, fairly straightforward in certain ways, but I think pretty effective in terms of presenting the content and having it there and also doing a good job discussing it. You can see she's got embedded media here. She's got, she's using formatting to highlight her point. She's used Voyant tools and then copied or, or you took images out of that for the word clouds. Um, she's talking about music, so she includes the, the YouTube videos here are the songs themselves, and then these are the lyrics that she's focusing on. And then uh, she comes up with the, the analysis at the end. So it's a fairly, like, in terms of the code, uh, fairly, um, I don't want to say minimal, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Like, it, it does what it needs to, and that's great. Uh, not too fancy, and it doesn't have to be. Uh, but it does take some work to get it from just raw code to something like this. And I can, I'll show you what kinds of things she had to do in this case, if you'd like to know something about that. Um, let's see, uh, this one, yeah. So Matt is doing a little bit more of an advanced thing with his. Um, so you notice he's got a long title here. He's got different styles for the subtitle. He's got images, he's got links in here. Um, 
he's got he did the image J Z projections of different characters so uh, he could composite those together and he's got some discussion of those he did the barcode thing with them so he did a lot and then he put it together nicely um, he's got a background image of a crab for some reason I don't know <laughs> I can't tell um, I don't play enough Smash to know if that's a reference to something in Smash Bros. I do play Smash Bros. but not that often. Uh, okay, and then down here he's got some citations. Um, he did a lot more, uh, and so certainly you could do this in a couple days. Um, it, it is not, I'm not necessarily expecting you to do this, but it's an example of the kind of thing you can do with this. Um, and the great thing, by the way, about HTML is that if you see a website and you like something you see on it, you can right click and I think I don't know if you can see my right click because of how OBS is capturing the video but um, you can pop let me see if this pops up yeah so you can open the element inspector in Firefox uh, it's a similar tool in in Chrome uh, and Safari I think has it too and you can click through it and see the HTML that in this case Matt wrote to produce this this uh, web page that you see here you can also just right click and view page source. And so this is this is what Matt wrote. I mean, this is, these are his the things he typed. Um, now, I, I had a couple, I, I would have a couple of points of feedback for him. I would say you don't actually need to indent paragraphs like, the, like he's done here, but um, you know, it's not a huge issue. It's just stylistically on the web, we, the convention is not to indent uh, paragraphs, but he chose to, and it's not honestly a big deal. Uh, also, I would have recommended making this a single each of these separate paragraphs, but again, not a huge, not a huge problem. Uh, just a slight uh, difference of choice that he made there. Uh, but again, that's the great thing about HTML. It's an open language and you can look at it. Uh, you can learn how things are made often. It's a great way to learn. Uh, also a great way to debug once you've produced your own web page and it doesn't look the way you expected. You can use the elements inspector to try to figure out what happened. Okay, so a couple of things to shoot for there perhaps or think about as kind of what we're going toward. So uh, I have this, this bit here, uh, I'm talking a little bit about what kinds of things you might continue to need as, as resources. Uh, the main thing is that uh, a lot of, this is the point in this project where sometimes students get pretty intimidated. Uh, they think, well, I can't write code. Um, yes, you can. So um, you can do this. I can, I can help you do this. But uh, also, you are capable of doing this. That's the thing I want to mainly convince you of, is that you can do a site like what Matt did or like what Elsa did or something else. Um, and it's okay if it's hard. Uh, it is okay to be frustrated by it. It's, you will likely be frustrated by it. Computers and code uh, can be very frustrating, and um, I get frustrated all the time, and that's okay. Uh, the main thing I want to convince you of is, it, this is something I hear a lot whenever a student encounters a, a challenge. They'll say, well, I can't do this. Uh, I'm just not a computer person. Um, or, and they, they take that idea of the frustration that they're feeling as evidence that they are uh, not a computer person um, or that they can't do this. But again, you can. You can do this. Uh, I can help you do this. Um, the thing that you have to get used to is that failure and frustration and uh, all of that is normal. Um, the fact that you feel frustrated doesn't mean you're a failure or that you're some other kind of person. The fact that you're feeling frustration means that you're trying to deal with computers, and that's that's just how it is. Um, you might, like, as you grow in your capabilities, you might find yourself frustrated by different things or more complicated things, but that's just the basic workflow of it. That's the basic experience of a computer programmer is, how the heck do I do this? Um, at least that's my experience. Maybe there are computer programmers for whom everything is easy, um, but uh, I'm... I'm certainly not that at that level. So uh, you don't have to be either, and you won't, you may not be, it's all right. Um, there's a lot of ways you can find help for things. So these are uh, some good resources, obviously, you know, Democracy Schools Code Academy. Something else you'll find useful if you know exactly what you need, and sometimes that's, that's the challenge, but if you think you know how to, you know, figure, you want to try to figure out how to do something in CSS or HTML, a lot of times you can find how to do it on Stack Overflow or other websites. Um, and that's okay too. Uh, I can show you those kinds of things, but that's really what I do whenever I, I get stuck. Um, when you get stuck, you, you can, uh, of course, reach out here in, uh, in Slack. Okay, so let's take a look at a practical uh, implementation of some of the HTML that you've hopefully started learning. I'll go over it, but it, so it might be review, uh, or this might be, you might be watching this first before you try the W3Schools uh, stuff, um, but in either order, whatever it is. Uh, hopefully this will work. Um, uh, like I've said before, when I do the face-to-face -face class, I like to give students this content at least two and, hope, and ideally three different ways. 
um, with the hope that it, by using different methods, that it, it reaches everyone uh, eventually. Okay, so I'm actually going to switch my tabs, but first I wanted to show you where I am and orient you to a couple of things. So this is my UMW Domains account, and it looks pretty similar to yours. Uh, I have a few other things, but basically it's the same thing. Um, when we talk about adding a page on the website that you've created, um, I want to be clear about a couple of things. We're not dealing with WordPress here, so do not use WordPress for this project. Um, you should not log into your WordPress dashboard at all unless you, I mean, you can do that for blogging, but uh, not for the HTML, CSS part of that. Uh, you will not be able to write HTML and CSS the way I'm asking you to within WordPress at all. So get that out of your head, I guess. Uh, also, there's a couple other things to avoid, but the main thing we're going to work with is the file manager. The file manager is a way of looking at your UMW Domains account like a computer, because it is. It's a slice of a computer, but it's, it's a slice that looks like a computer, and you've got files and folders, and where they are in relation to each other, and what kind of thing is in them determines and creates your website. Uh, that's what WordPress is doing for you, but we're going to be doing it ourselves. We're getting a little bit closer to the, to the metal, so to speak, uh, in this project as we try to create some HTML and CSS ourselves. So this is where we're going to be working. Now, I, the other day, just to kind of demonstrate this a little bit, I went ahead and made a subdomain. Where did I put it? Uh, oh, yeah. No, so subdomains, I'm not going to do this again because you've seen subdomains now a couple times. But I do recommend making a subdomain just for this project. Uh, it lets you deal with it independently and not have to worry about uh, collisions with uh, WordPress or anything else or overwriting WordPress files or anything like that. So I'd say make it a subdomain. Um, I say I would recommend make your subdomain name something about something related to your project. Uh, if you make it something generic like project.yourname.com or uh, digitalmethodology.yourname.com, it's a little bit harder for you to look at that later and remember what that was. Uh, so I recommend making it something more specific. And so in my demo the other day, I made one called BLM uh, FXBG, just a short version of Black Lives Matter Fredericksburg, um, on the premise that I was doing a project about the Black Lives Matter protests over the last uh, couple weeks in uh, Fredericksburg. So uh, I already did that, so I'm going to switch over to my file manager where that is now and show that to you. So it is a subdomain, so it shows up here on the left, and this is the way that I can access this subdomain and add content to it. I added one file the other day called index.html, and I can look at it in another window. I will do that in a second. Let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to say here while I'm looking at it in this view. Uh, this is the, the name index.html is a special name, so I do recommend creating your project this way so you have a, a subdomain, and then in that subdomain you have a single HTML file called index.html. Eventually, you will probably have other files like style.css or maybe some images. What you, you call those doesn't matter a whole lot, but calling your main page index.html does matter. So I recommend doing that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to a different view of the same content so you can kind of see this uh, played out a little bit. So, whoops, nope. Uh, let me switch my stuff over here. Okay, so this these are a couple other... WordPress, win, uh, Firefox windows, rather. Let me switch my thing up so I can see these. Okay, great. Um, so on the, I like to have a workflow where I have contents, like code on the left and contents on the right. So hopefully that's what it looks like to you and, and that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so this is back to my main cPanel page and it's a narrower window, so I need to take a look down here to switch over into the right account. And, oh, seriously, okay. I need to log back in, so give me a second to do this. Um, let's see. And there we go. So I need to switch accounts. There we go. There we go. File manager. And this looks a little compressed right now, but it'll look okay in a minute. Uh, so here's my subdomain, and here's my index file. Okay, so I'm going to right-click on this index file and edit it. Remember, uh, don't use HTML edits. You might be tempted to because this is a project about writing HTML, but that's 
confusingly, the thing called HTML edit is not actually a code editor. So I don't know, names are confusing. I didn't come up with it. Um, but go with edit. Edit will give you a code editor in the browser. And the nice thing about this is that it's in the browser. You don't have to download any software. Um, I like downloading software and working on my own desktop, but that adds a step to the workflow and I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible in my recommendation here. So this is what it should look like. Now, um, there's a t so we need to talk about location and what it means to be somewhere as a file. Um, so this is a file called index.html. This right here is what's called its path. So it's home slash zwayland slash blm xbgdjsd 101net slash index.html. So that's what the web server thinks of it as and that's where it lives. Now, uh, if I wanted you to see this file, I could not send you this. Uh, this is a path to the file's location on the server. Uh, what we want to see is the path to that file on the web. And it's actually uh, pretty easy to get to, I hope. So I'll show you that. So it's blmfxbg.dgst101.net. By the way, if you do have questions, go ahead and ask, ask them. Uh, I might be, uh, I might not be able to answer them while I'm going. I'd rather kind of move through this somewhat smoothly. Um, but if you do have questions, uh, let me know. Uh, really though, I recommend taking notes as I'm doing this and then try it later. Um, I mean, you can try to follow along, but if we are all in different places, it can get confusing. So I'd recommend take notes for now and then try it later. And then if you get, have questions as you try it, then, then we'll talk. Uh, okay, so this is this page. I do remember writing some things in this file the other day, but it's not there. Maybe I forgot to save it. <laughs> um, so you can see it's a blank page on the right. That's still the case. Um, and let me make sure I'm streaming the right thing. Yeah, okay. So, and then I have my code editor on the left. And what I'm going to do, the workflow I'm going to do is write code on the left and um, save it here and then refresh it to see what happened. Um, so far, nothing because I haven't really added any content yet. But that's that's the workflow. Like, so it's right on. I don't know which just which side I'm gesturing towards in your view of it. But right code on the left, save it. Uh, switch to the other side, refresh it, and see what what changed. Uh, and that's the basic back and forth of it. That's how the Try It Now editor works in W3 Schools, and it's similar in Code Academy. And so it's easy to kind of set up your own environment the same way. Okay, so let's write some HTML. Uh, so we'll just do the basic things. Remember with HTML, it's all about the opening and the closing and HTML, the tag called HTML is the first one or the most outer one. And uh, so I saw a question from Ryan. Uh, do not, you don't need to pay Code Academy. Um, so I would rather, that, I think that's a, that's a good um, reason to use W3 schools. A lot of Code Academy is free, uh, but the the quizzes they ask you to pay for those and i think that's annoying so if that's if you also find that annoying then you're welcome to use w3 schools and i think w3 schools is great too so i think they're both good there is also i mean html is an open language and anybody can write their own resources there are probably hundreds or if not thousands of other websites that will help you try to learn this stuff uh, also a lot of, a lot of youtube videos uh, a lot of times it's easier to see something if someone's doing it in a step-by-step -step process so by all means you know, find what works for you to help you learn these things. Uh, and I hope that what I'm doing helps you learn these things too, but sometimes you need to find your own things as well. Okay, so let's write a little bit of content. Um, so we'll just say hello, and this should now be a, uh, a document, and now it shows up. So if you remember, we've got a couple of different special elements here. Uh, by the way, the word tag and the word element are interchangeable in HTML, so it's, it's technically an element, but we write it like it, the concept is an element, but we write a, a tag to indicate which element is a semantic slippage there, but it's not important. So um, HTML uh, body is where we write. Now, I like to just write all these fully left um, just because they're structural things, and then that's just kind of leave those there. Um, but we have two big areas of content where we can write some things now. We've got the head, which opens and closes, and then immediately after the head closes, the body opens and then closes just before HTML. So this is the HTML skeleton, and this should be the be this is the beginning of how you write an HTML document. Um, in Sublime Text, which is a, a code I use, uh, the code editor I use, there's a, a macro. You just you do a little keyboard thing, and it'll just cop it'll just paste this in there automatically to start with, uh, because it's just how you started that, an HTML document. And so it'll just go ahead and do this for you. Now you should not be like if I'm helping you troubleshoot these things. One of the things I will look for if if, if something's going wrong with your page is 
Like, do you have multiple closings? Do you have multiple openings? Things like that. Uh, and that's easy to get lost in. And I understand that. Um, but, you know, try to keep it straight if you can. Okay, so let's do a couple of actual tags. So, uh, remember I said your page has to have a title. So, let's add this. Notice I'm in the head tag. I'm going to add a, I'm in head area, head element. I'm going to add a title tag as a child of head. And I'll call it, um, I'll give it an actual title. Kind of a long title. I don't recommend making the titles that long, but that's the idea. So you notice, you might have heard me say a special word. I said uh, child. So head here contains title. And let's see, can I make this wrap around so you can see it better? How do I do the view there? Well, you see that I'm, I'm losing track of that. Let me just go like that. Let's hit a line break. Uh, I was looking for a line wrap tool, but I can't seem to find it. Um, so this is the title. Now, uh, as I said, it's a child. So this one opens and closes entirely within the bigger parentheses of head. And so that's that's what that parent-child relationship means. The child, title is a child of head. Now, head is separate from body, uh, as I said, and they work in different ways. A head, head area lets you add elements that are providing meta information about the document. So they are not the content yet. We still haven't got the content. So watch what happens the word hello, I'll put that back in there. So watch what happens when I refresh the page. So um, I'm going to hit save and then hit the refresh and check out what happened. Did you notice it? Um, this is usually where like, if I have a face-to-face -face class, I do a quick you know, moment to see who notices what changed. Uh, the content did not change. The content still just says hello, but the browser, I don't know if you can even see that in the top of, let me just double check how I have it in OBS. Um, yeah, the title of the tab and the window here say Black Lives Matter protest in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So that's that's what that's what we're talking about. Um, and let me where am I? I need to make sure I'm not showing you the too many. Wait a minute. Sorry, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm showing you the right things in my thingy here because my live stream is frozen on the playback and I can't seem to find the left window that I was working in. Hang on, let me figure this out. Okay, there we go. That's what I was trying to show you. Were, were you all seeing this thing that is now on the left? Were you seeing that before? Because that's what I was meant to be doing. Um, but I, I'm not sure if I actually was. Oh, I have like 12 different layers of OBS <laughs> windows here, so it's, it's kind of tricky. Uh, but this is what I was intending to show you on the left. And the right, I think, was there, but the left may not have been. Um, and Samantha, what is on the right is the final product. So that's that's... I mean, what I, for the code I have so far on the left, that produces what you see on the right. And that's the idea. It's live. So you save it on the server, and then you refresh it and see what it looks like on the web. OK, so I may not have, been in, I may not have actually been showing you what is currently on the left. So let me just go through that real quick, uh, if, if that's the case. So I apologize for getting lost in the windows there. But this is the HTML um, tag or element. It opens and closes, at, opens at the beginning, closes at the end. Uh, there's also the head, which opens and closes. Um, and then right after the head closes, body opens and, cl and then closes. So head and body are stacked on each other. Um, and there's nothing between them. And they also cannot overlap each other uh, or contain each other. Uh, they have to be separate. And then so far, the only tag I've added is title. And title is a child of uh, a child of, I see your question, Smith, one question, uh, let me get through this. Uh, title is a child of head, and so that's why it's going to apply as metadata to the, um, to the, uh, the web page. It's not content yet, it just affects how it's presented. So Samantha, the thing on the right here is the public view of the web page. And so this is what I can send you a link to. And so in this case, I created a subdomain called blmfxbg.dgst101.net. So I've just opened a browser to that URL and I'm looking at it that way. So if you've made a subdomain and you put a file in it called index.html, 
you would type in that subdomain dot your domain name dot com or whatever your domain name is and you should see it as well and again having that left and right workflow does seem to work pretty well uh, so that's what i recommend as far as organizing your your visual workspace okay so uh, and i'm you know it's on the right for me if it makes sense to do it on the left for you then that's okay too okay so hopefully that makes sense samantha if not uh let me know and i can try to clarify but hopefully you can all now see what i see which is yeah looks good so you have on the left there the code and then on the right which is sort of behind me uh that's the the output the the live version of this web page i mean you can also browse to this web page like i'll just share the link um here in slack here's the web page i'm working on right now So you're welcome to view this page as I add a few more things to it, uh, if you'd like. Okay, so let me get back into adding some more HTML. Hopefully, hopefully we're all on the same page now, more or less, but you can, of course, watch this later. So, okay, let's add some actual content tags and see what happens with these. So, um, hello, just the word, it just shows up there, and that's, that's fine. Um, but let's add an actual title that we can see on the page. And let's do that with a, a tag called h1, an element called h1. Um, I recommend making these have the same content usually. Um, so hey, let's make that my H1 and let me hit save there and then reload it there. And so now we see it. Um, so let's see, Samantha, I'm gonna go ahead and answer your question if I can, just so I can help you out. But usually I wanted to uh, try to do these later. Let me see. Um, <laughs> okay. I am trying to see. All right, so I might be able to take a look at it. Um, let me, so Samantha had a question about what she's doing. I'm gonna go ahead and try to answer this because it's important to, others may have the same question too. Um, and I'm gonna to have to look at it to see. Uh, usually what happens in this moment if you are not seeing what you expect to see is that you're not looking at the same place. You're not looking at the file you think you are. Um, that's an easy thing to do. So summary, let me get your subdomain. Summary DVST project dot summer DVST project. Yes. Should I spell that all right this time? I don't know. Okay, so um, let's so I can't actually see your your left the 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 um, full path on the left, but I just browse to your subdomain, uh, which gives me an index of the contents of that. Uh, so it looks like you do have a couple of things here. You have a, a file called page, capital P, and a file called lowercase page.html. Um, these file names are case sensitive, so I always recommend lowercase file names on, on the web. Uh, it, it, some web servers are, are case sensitive, some are not. I honestly don't remember which ours is, so I just always go with lowercase. Um, so if it's, yeah, if it's, well, I can, yeah, this is, um, an HTML file has to end in the file extension .html, and this does not, so that could be part of the problem. It could also be, though, and I suspect what's happening is you might actually be editing this page instead, page.html on the left. Um, in either case, I recommend calling your document index.html, and then that will allow you to see it right here instead of this, which is an index. If you think of the word index as a synonym for contents or table of contents, um, right now you don't have an index file, so we see the table of contents for your directory. Um, if we look at, uh, but if you make a file called index.html, then the web server will serve that instead of that list, right? So, okay, so page.html, yeah, so here's a page. Um, it's the one uh, that, I don't know if that's the one you're working on on the left. It does look like your content is is different, but uh, the title is the same. So I think this is probably the, the file uh, that you you have in, in, the, in the code editor. So, um, you know, the title says HTML test. So that's probably 
probably the same one, and that's what I would I would keep there. If you want to just go ahead and keep this one for now, that's fine. But it just it might be like eventually, I do recommend naming it index.html just to make it easier. Oh, it looks like perhaps you already did. So okay, yeah, there you go. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, so I think you're good now, or at least it looks like you are, so hopefully uh, you can continue following along and seeing some other things. Um, but of course, feel free to ask if you need uh, any more help. Um, okay, so let's move on. So we've got a title, uh, we need to add some content, and I don't have content, I haven't written an essay yet. So I'm just gonna do something really cheap, and I'm gonna get some lorem ipsum text. Uh, lorem ipsum is just the generic Latin placeholder uh, that is used in publishing to, um, give you the impression of content as you're figuring out things like layout. Uh, so it's it's a kind of a cheap way to do this, but it'll work. So I want to make a, a paragraph and the element to create a paragraph with is P. P stands for paragraph. So I'll go ahead and paste that in here and uh, save changes. So uh, there we go. So there it is. So something you might have noticed is that I wrote this Black Lives Matter protest in, and then I hit return and then continued Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, HTML does not actually care about line breaks or white space when you type them in code. Um, so you'll notice here that it actually printed all this on a single line. Um, I can make this a little bit wider so you can see that, but it's, it's, it's not going to show up with that line break in it uh, if I write a line break like this. Uh, that's great because that helps you write your code in a way that's easier for you to read. So you see on the left here, I can put paragraph, I can put line breaks wherever I want to to make it all easier to see at the same time. Um, and it does not matter how, it does not change how it's presented on the web page. If I do want to in, change the way it's presented on the web page, then I need to use an HTML element to do that. Uh, that's the whole logic of HTML is that you, you're very explicit about how things look and so you have to add the, the appropriate tag. You can't see it by the way, so let me see, let me put my paragraph tag uh, in view on this on the left here. Uh, every The paragraph tag does have to be, um, every, every paragraph needs to open and close and uh, you should also make sure you don't accidentally overlap paragraphs. So you don't want to open one paragraph and then open another before you close the first one and then you can get out of sync like that. Um, it, you may, you know, the, like I said earlier, HTML is a pretty forgiving language. You might end up with a web page that looks okay, but you might not. And so, you know, you want to be as consistent as you can. Okay, so we've got uh, a paragraph there. Let's go ahead and get a couple more paragraphs just to kind of give ourselves more something that looks more like an essay. And I'll add some paragraph tags here. You know, the one thing I don't, I sometimes get annoyed by with code editors is when they autocomplete. Like, I know that I want, I don't want to complete that yet, so I have to delete this one that it adds for me, but, you know, it's hard for it to tell. And that's okay. Just always make sure that they open and close in the right sequence, and again, line breaks don't matter. Um, whenever you make a change, it's always good to save it and see what happened. And, you know, in this case, so far, still making, making progress. All right, so moving on, let's do a couple more things. Now, I, I actually want to make this a longer essay, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste a bunch of these things. Um, yours doesn't have to be super long, but I want to show you how, how to structure your document. Um, so let me add a few more of these paragraphs, just copy and paste a bunch, and here we go. Uh, in the explanation of my expectations for this, I mentioned several sections. You want to have some description of your process, you want to have some evidence, and you want to have some conclusions, maybe even work cited. Um, each of those is a separate section of your document, and you should indicate that those are separate sections of your document using headings. So let me show you how to do headings in here. We've got one already, which is H1, uh, and H1 is going to be the most important heading, or the highest level thing, and that should be the title. You should have only one H1 on your page, but you should have multiple H2s probably, and H2 is going to be uh, a second order heading. So not the second in sequence, but the second in importance. So think of it like um, uh, an outline. So there's the introduction, let's say, here's the uh, process, oops, not P. Here's the uh, process section. Here's the evidence. I don't, you know, I'm just making this up, obviously. Um, and here's the conclusion. So each of these is as you can see in H2, and they're all going to show up uh, the same size going down the page here. So there, this is not, I didn't, you notice that I did not go H1, H2, H3, 
three, age four, age five. Sometimes students do that. That's that's incorrect. That's not what you're doing there. Um, and you notice that the, the web page does actually, uh, like it presents these in the same font as everything else, but at a slightly smaller size. Um, each of these is acting as its own paragraph, so there's a line break before and after it, and so they're set apart from the paragraph nice and, and clean visually, and it looks pretty good. Um, so you should usually have what, you know, just one H1 element, and you should have at least two or three H2s. If you have subheadings within process, let's say you had step one, step two, step three, each one of those would be H3s. So let's go ahead and let's try that out just so you can see what that would look like. Um, H3, step one. Um, H3, step two. And again, save the change, see what happens, and it looks like that. Okay, so uh, these are so far what are called block level elements, which means that they, even if you can't actually see it, what they're doing on the page is creating a big rectangle around themselves to show where they appear in the page. You can see that rectangle if you right click on it, if, if this is Firefox, uh, and if I, if I right click and I go to inspect element, um, you can see the, the, the rectangles. So as I hover over different elements here, you can see that it's got the, the blue and then the, the yellow to show the, the margin for it. Um, each of these takes up the full width left and right uh, of the, the web page, and it's presented that way. Uh, right now my window is pretty narrow, but if I make it uh, much, much wider, you can see, hopefully, I guess, hopefully you can see this on the stream, it will uh, make these paragraphs as wide as the window. Uh, we're going to do some things later, hopefully, to um, make that a much, make that a narrower column, but we have to do some other work first. Uh, but just bear in mind, these are rectangles, these are block level elements. There's another broad category called inline elements. This is where you want to change some text inside of a block. So let's say, and again, these are Latin phrases, so they don't mean anything, but let's say that these, this is, I mean, they do, assume, I assume, mean something, but I don't read Latin, so I don't know. Um, let's say I want to make this phrase here, presentium delectus aut requiendus. Requiendus? I don't know. My wife knows Latin, so I should ask her. But this is, um, you know, let's say we want that to be uh, in a, a bold type a bold font. We want to emphasize this. This is something really important we want to make sure people see. So the way to do that is with a tag called strong and it is just the word strong. It opens like a block element like P or H or any of those other ones and then it closes at the end of the area that you want to be in bold. So if I save those changes you should see that show up in bold. Um, strong means we want this to be strong. Uh, you notice th this is not bold. Uh, there is a tag B uh, and, but it is depreciated and it is better to use strong. Uh, they will accomplish the same thing typographically, but uh, strong conveys more meaning semantically, which is what we're trying to get to here. Uh, let's say we want this phrase to be italicized. Uh, we, the, the tag, the correct tag to do that with is EM, which stands for emphasis. So quisquam omnis is now italicized. Uh, that's that's the right way to do that. There's a whole bunch of tags, and um, the nice thing about W3Schools is you, there's a whole index of all the tags, and you can, if you just want to try to do something, you can look at one of those tags and see what see what it is and see what it does. All right. So there's some that are like kind of random seeming to me. Like if you want to make something look like it was typed on a keyboard, like I don't really understand that, but you can do that. And this doesn't always actually make a difference. Um, you might have to add styles to it, but yeah, I think so. You have to add your own style for this, but I think, where did I even, where even is this? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, but there's, there's a few more. Let's try, let's try code. This one should make a difference. Yeah, there you go. So just, it code should present it in a monospace font. Um, and you can get much more nuanced about how these different elements are portrayed typographically once you get into CSS. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get there today, but we'll, we'll, we'll try. Okay, so this is uh, the basic structure of a document. So let's do, let's actually, um, let's do two more things with HTML. Let's add an image and let's add a link. We'll do a link first because that's easiest. Uh, a link is an inline tag. So let's say I want to make this word um, blanditis, <laughs> blanditis accusantium in the second paragraph there, a link to uh, dgst101.net. 
So this is a, or actually I'll just make the word Lambda a dis, I'll make that the link. Um, so a, a link tag is actually not the, the word link, um, at least not the kind of link I'm talking about here. There is a link tag, but it's for connecting documents at a high level, not for connecting a text to a link to something else. So the tag that we're interested in is A. It is an inline tag, so it opens at the beginning of the thing I want to make a link. Yeah, it keeps auto-completing that. And it closes at the end of the thing I want to make a link. Uh, we're not done yet, though, but this is, this is the beginning. It's an A tag, so start with that opening and closing. Save the changes, and you should see it turn blue. Perhaps, maybe not, because I haven't finished it yet. Uh, but that's where it is. Um, and so I'm going to finish this off. So I need to add a, at least one attribute. So elements have names, which is in this case the letter A, and then they have also can have attributes which go inside of that. So I'm going to I'm going to move this down into its own line so you can see it may, maybe a little better. And add an attribute. So there's several. The most important one for a link is the href attribute. H R E F. And the convention is uh, not to put spaces after attribute names, so it's just the name of the attribute, in this case href, an equal sign, and then in quote marks, write what I want the value to be for this attribute. This is a link, and so I need to, I mean, it's a, a link I want people to click on and go somewhere else, and so the href attribute is the somewhere else. This is where I want people to um, be next after they click on this. So I need to write a fully justified URL here. Uh, if possible. So this is a, it starts with HTTP or HTTPS. Let's go ahead and do the HTTPS. Um, and it's a link. So it's, it starts with that and then it is the full place I want to take people. In this case, it's djst101.net, but I could also link to some uh, some page within that or I could link to, you know, something I find on the web and copy and paste, anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save those changes and make sure that that shows up right. And there it is. And here's this link. If I click on it, I We'll hopefully go to djst101.net, and I did. So great. Um, so that's the the main thing you need to. I mean, for for a link that you have to have that. Like if you want to have a clickable link, you have to have an href. You can do other things. Like you can add uh, target equals underscore blank, and then that will make it open in a new tab. I, a lot of people prefer that, and that's fine. I mean, that's I like that personally, but you don't have to. Um, you can also add a description and a title. Um, but let's just keep it simple for now and keep it just with that. Okay. Um, by the way, to pay attention to the colors. So this is, in my code editor here that I'm using, it has a basic color scheme that it uses to show you how it is interpreting the syntax of what I'm writing. So if you notice, I, I, when I wrote it, the elements are this kind of purpley color. Uh, the attribute name is this kind of golden brown color. Uh, the equal sign is kind of a purpley gray, I guess. And then the value, or the URL in, the, in question, is blue. Um, now, if I, if I miss something, let's say I forgot to type that ending quote marks, notice what's happened. Everything after that is now blue because it, as, as far as the syntax highlighter knows, I'm still writing that URL. I've never stopped writing that URL because I never wrote the double quote mark to end it. So you got to make sure you do these. If things start looking weird in terms of the colors, usually there's a syntax error. So that's the kind of thing that uh, helps you write code uh, if you if you know how to read it. Um, yeah. So that's that's a link. So let's do an image because that does take a bit more a uh, bit more work. Let's say uh, so. I'm just going to use this tab over here on the right. So let me just go to Unsplash and get a an image to work with. Um, let's say oh, it's just going to protest image. Uh, this is just going to be a generic image, that, or I mean, not generic, but you know, generic with respect to what I'm doing right now. Um, let's see, let's get a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so, so let's get this uh, image here. Now, when you get an image from Unsplash, they are free to use, and that's the nice thing about it. They are also huge images, so I don't recommend doing what I'm about to do, which is upload a very large image to my web page. I'd recommend shrinking an image first, but we'll just go ahead and do it. Oh, so I got this image, and I did not even notice where I saved it, so hopefully I will be able to find it. Uh, all right, so let me go back to the left. Now, for me to see an image in my web page, I want it to show up here. Let's say I want it to show up uh, uh, at the beginning, like at the very top of this page. Um, that image has to be on my web server. And so to get it on my web server, I need to upload it using a file manager. So back over here, let me kind of adjust this window a bit. 
if I can, can I make this smaller? Uh, wish I could. Uh, well, this is the this is the file manager view of my subdomain and my project so far. Uh, I have an upload button here, so I'm going to click that and then see if I can find that file I just downloaded. Looks like I just found it. So you click upload. Once it gets to 100%, then you go back and you should see it. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so give me one second, John. And then so you can see here that this is the name of that file I just uploaded. It's Pavel Janiak, and then it's all this other stuff. So I'm just going to take all this off and make it a shorter file name because I'm going to need the file name in a second when I try to include this image in my um, in my HTML. So I just saw, I think John had a question uh, about ending the HTML, the, the A tag. This is kind of big. Maybe if I sort of zoom out a bit, that'll make it a little bit better. Um, but it is actually just the letter, the forward slash A. So this is the opening part of my tag, and that's where the attribute goes, the href, whatever. The end is always the same. It is it's still just that forward slash A. So it's that's all you got to do. Um, so... Uh, let's go ahead and answer that in there. Just, um, all right, so I just added that in Slack. By the way, in Slack, if you want to type something and make it look like code, you can use the back tick mark in in, in code to, in the on your keyboard to um, make it look like code when you type it, and and that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's what I just did to reply to John. Uh, okay, so uh, hopefully that, that answers your question, John. Uh, I'm going to go ahead uh, with the image thing. So the, um, yeah, exactly. So that's that's what happens. If you don't close your link, everything else is a link. Um, okay, so this image is called Pavel, Pavel Janiak, uh, Janiak, Janiak. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, let me uh, see. So um, the thing you need to remember about file names is they aren't just names. They're actually locations. They're directions for one file to find another. And so we need to make sure that we're very clear about what file names are. And in this case, uh, you know, as you see here, I just I shortened it, but it's it's the name of the photographer, Pavel Um I have it highlighted here so I can copy it because I'm going to need to get it exactly the same when I write it in my code. Um, and that's you know it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, this is why I strongly recommend whenever you're naming files, uh, always use lowercase and do not use spaces. Uh, because spaces sometimes can be encoded differently. Uh, the space character can either be literally a space character, like what you hit when you hit, hit the space bar, or in different contexts, it might need to be represented as percent two zero as a URL escapes in, encoding of it. And you don't want to, if you don't want to deal with that, just don't use spaces in file names ever. Um, so just a in just a general <laughs> piece of advice there. But we do need to know what this name is. Uh, so let's try to put an image here just at the top. An image tag is a little different than the ones we've seen so far in that it has several attributes and also it has um, it is self-contained, meaning it does not have a beginning and an ending. Everything is all in one block with an image tag. So let me create one here. Uh, it is img and then it closes like that with just a forward slash and the, the angle bracket. Uh, this is not going to work yet um, because it doesn't have the required attributes that it needs, but it's uh, this is the syntax of an image tag, uh, right? So this is, again, different. It doesn't have two pieces. It's one together. It still has a forward slash, but it's in a different place because there's only one time you type the IMG for this one. That's because an image isn't containing something else. It is, it's, it is just itself. Uh, so uh, let's add some things we need. So you remember when href, uh, the, the, every... <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, closing tags is very important. Um, that's really it. I mean, once you get that kind of ingrained into your, your habits, then you're good. Um, uh, all right, so just like with HTML, with, with the uh, A tag, the href attribute tells this link what to do. We need to add some attributes to tell this image tag what to do, like which image file to load and how big to make it and some other things. So let's do this. So um, the first and most important attribute is source, SRC. And notice my syntax again, it's just the name of the attribute, src, an equal sign, no spaces. And then in quote marks, I'm going to need to put the location of the image I want it to load. Because I uploaded this file, this JPEG file, to the same directory as my index.html file, the location is simply the file name. 
Um, to get a little technical, this is a relative path. I could also use an absolute path, and I'll show you what that is uh, after I get this to work. Uh, but that's this is now a complete HTML image tag, and it will probably work. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it is. And as I told you, these photos are enormous when you get them from Unsplash. These are high res, usually professional photographers taking these with high res uh, lenses. So this is an enormous image, way, way too big. Um, big in terms of file size, but also big in terms of visual size because it completely dominates this web page. And that's not what I intended. So um, there's a few, something we should do here. <laughs> we can actually change the size of how this image appears arbitrarily in HTML. We can assign a width and height to it. So let's try that out. And this image was originally, what is this image originally? Let's see. Uh, it's just it's so enormous. I would, first of all, I would resize this in Paint or GIMP or Photoshop or whatever, um, whatever you prefer first. <laughs> but uh, we, can, we can definitely do it in HTML as well. Let me just get the actual sizes of it. So it's 5,184 by 3,313. So uh, an absolutely enormous image. Um, so let's do a little math. Uh, I would like to make this much narrower, but keep the same width to height ratio. So I'm going to use a calculator to do this. So it was what was it? It popped up for a second. Now it's not showing up anymore. Oh, now it's... Yeah, so, so I'm going to make a note of this. 5184 by 3313. Okay, so I want to actually make it... Let's see. Much smaller. Yeah, so if I divide those numbers by 4, 1296 is what I get if I divide the width by 4. And so if I, let me try dividing the height by 4. So that gives me 828. That's still very large. But we'll, we'll use it. Okay, somebody's running through my upstairs. All right, so we'll do width equals 1296. 96, height equals 828. Yeah, rounded slightly, but that should still be okay. And if I reload this, I can see that it is now a lot smaller. It is still enormous, it's still bigger than it should be, but it is much smaller. Um, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and make it even smaller than that. Um, now, one thing you can run into if you are setting the width and height arbitrarily like this is you can actually squish or stretch your image if you if you don't you know sometimes not you know unintentionally so let's say I want to, if I made this height value 400 keeps the width the same but it just kind of squeezes into that space if you want to crop the image you should do that separately in an image editing software and that's probably what I would do if I really wanted to use this image um, and that's that's the best way to keep it the same you know look but at just part of it is to edit it separately before you upload it. So that's, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and do that now, but this, this is um, a pretty good image. It's still too wide, um, but, you know, it's fine. It's, it hopefully proves a point. Now, one more thing that is important to add with an image, and then I will probably need to wrap it up. I'm going about an hour and I haven't even talked about CSS yet. So maybe I will do another stream tomorrow. Um, but let me, let me get this. I think it'll be a quick one. I just have a, couple, a few things on, on CSS, but I don't want to um, belabor it. Uh, let me go ahead and make a new line. Sometimes you'll see people do this with the image tags just to make it easier to read, like put each attribute on its own line, uh, just to make it easier to see what you're doing. Uh, the final attribute you definitely need with an image is alt, so A-L-T, and that's going to be a place where you type some words to describe what this image is. This is a photo by Pablo, Pablo of I don't know what that is. Something burning in the middle of a street. So yeah, it can be a description. Um, if you know what it is, of course, you should try to be accurate, but uh, this is 
my best guess about what that is. So that's um, the, the alt attribute does two really important things, or actually maybe three. Um, it shows up instead of the image if for some reason the image can't be rendered or if someone is accessing this web page and they can't actually see. They will have a computer reading them the description of this image instead of being able to see it. And so you need to make sure that these image descriptions are there. Uh, this is definitely something I will check for on your, your projects. If you have text uh, in your image, then you should include that text here. I talked about this a little bit with the Google Docs, so hopefully this isn't new, but that's something you should definitely have. Um, let me show you what would happen if I, let's say I had the wrong file name for this. Um, you would see a photo by Pavel Jani of something running in the middle of the street. You would actually see that text instead. And that's much better than just seeing the broken image icon or whatever that would end up being here. All right, so it's something that definitely can um, can help a user understand what your content is even if you've made an error in your code or if for some reason they can't they can't actually see it it also helps google index this image so google of course has the images and you remember we use the reserve the reverse image search thing in google this is how it knows what these images are and so if if you um, write good description text it will get indexed into google's idea of this image and it will help other people find it in the future or, or understand what it is in the future uh, okay, so I will wrap it up soon. Um, I will just leave it open for a minute or two if people have any more questions um, so I can try to answer them on the stream. Otherwise, I think I'll do one more tomorrow on CSS. Um, hopefully, though, this gives you some things to work with. Um, if you are working with Codecademy or W3Schools, go ahead and take a look at the CSS. Uh, the big, in the big picture, HTML is about structure, which is what I've done here, structure and content. Uh, and then CSS is about presentation, and CSS lives on top of uh, HTML. Let me just say very briefly two two different ways you can start putting CSS into into your documents. Um, I'm not totally sure which one I'm going to recommend. You know what? I think I will recommend the slightly harder but better way, <laughs> which is to make a separate CSS file. Um, there's three ways you can act you can actually get a CSS. Um, property, uh, what do you call it, declaration applied. Uh, there's in, you can do it inline, you can do it in the document, or you can do it as a separate document. Uh, there's probably more ways than that, but I'm going to do it as a separate, separate document. So let me just let me just show you that. I know I'm getting long, but I want to I wanted to get this in here because uh, I know a few of you are still watching and you probably need this. Um, so a style sheet is a separate document, and you can actually call it whatever you want. I just usually call it style.css. Um, you notice I'm putting this in the same folder where I have index.html, all lowercase, just the word style. Some people like to call it stylesheets.css. This part does not matter. Index.html, naming it, that, that does matter. But style.css does not matter so long as you remember what it is. Okay, so uh, this is where we're actually going to use a link tag in the header. And this is, again, the slightly harder way to do this, but this is more... Um, what you'll see more often on the web. This is more how programmers do it. So uh, this is a link tag, and I'm going to say this is type equals text CSS. I think this is, this is off the top of my head. Sometimes I have to get, I have to copy and paste, or I have to look up what this one is just to make sure that I, I get it right. Uh, I think this is right. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, so this is going to link this style sheet to this HTML document. And these are two separate documents, uh, two separate languages. Um, let me edit the style sheet and then try something out. Uh, style sheets have a very different syntax, a very different language. I'm not going to get into it today. I'm just going to try something out. That's not that's not how it works. What am I doing? I just want to change the color of the text real quick to just make sure it actually make sure that this particular uh, document is connected correctly and then I will wrap it up. So this is just a very simple CSS declaration to say for the entire body change the text color orange and let's see did not work. What am I missing? I missed something. What am I missing? Like I said, the style sheet link is something I sometimes don't remember off the top of my head.
maybe type is wrong. Maybe the text really has to be style sheet. I'm missing something. I don't know what it is, but you know, like I said, this is this is a common occurrence when I mean, we uh, uh, work with computers. You get things wrong sometimes, and you have to look it up later. Um, all right. Well, this is one of those things that I've done many times, but am drawing a blank on. So this is what I do when that happens. Uh, style sheet link tag. Literally just Google it or DuckDuckGo it, right? And as you see, it shows up here. And oh, rel, that's right, not type. That's what it is. Okay, so <laughs> that's what it is. So that, and so I found it on W3 Schools. That was a top result. Um, sometimes you'll find it on Stack Overflow or something else. But that just gave me the thing that I was missing, which is that it's the rel attribute. Rel means relationship. Like what is the relationship between these two? And it's saying that this one is the other one's style sheet. That's what that's meaning there. So that's 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 just a. a this is what I recommend, and um, you can also write styles in a style block inside of the head, but I, I like to keep them separate to help emphasize that these are two separate languages and the syntax is very different and the structure of them is very different. I like to keep them as separate documents anyway uh, for my own stuff, so uh, hopefully that makes sense for you all too. So anyway, I'll wrap it up here, but I'll talk about style sheets a bit more tomorrow. Maybe I'll just, I, I might even just pre-record a video and share, with it, share it with you tomorrow so that you can have that. But I'm going to go and wrap up the stream for now. Um, so thanks for watching. If you do have questions, then uh, as always, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer. Okay, I'll see you later. Have a good afternoon.